We're live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm Ian Gracie, and I'm the Dean of Admission at Groton, and I'm here with Carolyn Chica. Hello, my name is Carolyn Chica, and, and I am the Director of Inclusion Outreach at Groton, as well as an Associate Director of Admission. Um, you will hear uh, a more expanded introduction of both of us later, but um, we want to just start off with some words, um, some more words from Ian. I have to say that I think that this is one of the more helpful webinars we we are making this year. We try to do this. We've tried to do this for a couple of years now. Just give people some information about Groton and also about the application in general. This is really not about Groton. This is about your approach to to uh, applying to secondary school. And um, as as this slide indicates, it really is both a science and an art. It involves a lot of analysis uh, of uh, outside information and also introspection in which you think about yourself, who you are, who you want to be. And when you go through the, that process uh, and thinking about things like this, uh, you're gonna be in good shape as you approach this, uh, approach different schools and all the different things that you're going to confront, writing applications, going through interviews, think about, what you want and who you are, and you're gonna be in good shape. Anything to add to that, Carolyn? Yes, uh, so tonight in our format, we are going to uh, give you just an overview of the application process. Um, then we're going to do an activity. Um, we are also gonna ask you to engage with us in the chat, similar to how we just did at the top of the program. Uh, and then we'll walk you through a research template that could also help you. Um, so there's kind of like an art piece and a science piece. Um, both should be pretty interactive. And at the end, uh, we'll share just some general um, nuggets of, of insight or advice and also open the floor for questions. Great. So uh, first, some introductions, a little bit about me, Ian Gracie. I've been at Groton for 15 years now. I was, uh, I've been in school since 1984 with, with a bit of an interruption in which I was actually a filmmaker. I went to NYU's Graduate School of Film and Television. And I was, I think, really destined to, to have a career out there. But I fell in love with this woman that you see in the middle of this group of lacrosse players. And that's Martha Gracie, my wife, who's an English teacher at Groton. Um, Martha, Martha is pretty spectacular. And when we uh, decided to move closer to New York so I could go to film school, Martha taught in a school down there. And, you know, I decided that rather than pursue this film career, that I couldn't resist staying in, in schools. And um, I have um, been in uh, boarding schools for a long time now. And uh, Martha is a big reason for that. Um, Ms. Chica, who put this slide together, decided that uh, I should talk about being a baseball person. <laughs> That's just part of who I am. I've been a teacher. I've been a coach. I've been a coach for 25 years of this uh, sport called baseball. And she's also put in a slide of gardening, uh, really um, uh, raising uh, nice flowers is Martha's domain. I'm more of someone who raises potatoes and butternut squash. But in a way, I am a gardener of uh, something else, which is students who get to join our community. And one of the great joys of my life is watching them grow. It is such an incredible thing to see someone move from the age of 13 to the age of 18 in our schools. And Ian, um, growing up was uh, boarding school something that was on your radar or just applying to a school like Ryan? That's a really good question, uh, Chica. I actually had uh, half of my family uh, was always public school or from another country. <laughs> And uh, the other half had been in private schools for probably 250 years. But I grew up in a small town in Connecticut and I did not make the choice to go to boarding school. And I think that I gained uh, some wonderful things by being, being in a small tight-knit community, but I didn't know what I was missing. Um, uh, it's incredible what you experience when you go to these schools and you meet people from all around the world. You have teachers who are remarkably talented in their fields, but more importantly, they are people who are extremely dedicated to the welfare of young people. I mean, can you imagine 
um, you, uh, living your life with uh, living with all of these adolescents. Uh, sometimes I think we're kind of crazy, but it is so rewarding to be part of worlds like this. So I didn't make this choice. Um, I, uh, so what we're describing tonight is the journey I did not take and the journey I encourage you to take because these secondary schools are remarkable. Over to you, Carolyn. Uh, so, uh, this next slide um, is just kind of a review of what the sequence um, of the application process would look like. Um, so Ian, actually, could, could you walk us yeah, through sure. this one a bit? Um, when you're applying to schools, when you're thinking about where you wanna go, it's important to do a good deal of research. I actually think it's easier these days to do this sort of research than it was in the past when we didn't have to make a lot of accommodations because of the pandemic. All schools are making a, a special effort to provide extra information on their uh, websites so that you can learn about the culture of our schools. We have webinars galore, we have information sessions. I highly recommend that you visit some of these information sessions so that you can see students and hear from them and ask them questions to see what it feels like to be part of that community. You'll also be able to visit schools um, and, uh, and that's, that's important too. In, in some places you won't be able to, um, to visit with students, but you will be able to see what the, what the campus looks like. Um, as far as interviewing is concerned, most of that interviews that are gonna be taking place are online, but I had this habit of, and I can't do this all the time, but I often will be interviewing online and I'll take my laptop and I'll walk out into the, into the schoolhouse and show people what, what Groton's like, or I go out and, and show them the exterior, uh, the circle. Um, it, it's important to, to realize that interviewing online is not actually difficult. It's, it's actually in many ways more comfortable because you can interview from your home and you can also, uh, and, and you can just relax a bit. So the interview, uh, to give you a sense of what interviews are all about and what we're after, um, I'll just say that I think if you do your homework about who you are, who you want to be, and what you're after in terms of schools, if you do some of that thinking in advance, you'll, you'll feel really good in, in, in the interview because it really is just a conversation between an adult and you about what your objectives are. What we're really after when we're interviewing people or when we're looking at applications is trying to find people who are the right fit for our school. So try to think of this as, as um, an opportunity to, to find a school that really works for you. Now, I'll just say, uh, and I'll add to that right now by saying that there are a number of schools that are going to work for you. So don't feel like you have to get fixated on one place because what matters is how you perform in that school, what you make of that experience. So don't get too fixated early on on one particular school. Next topic um, I'll mention is standardized testing. I recommend that people take uh, the SSAT. It's a good experience in that, um, in that it's preparation for taking standardized tests in the future. But I will also note that this test is uh, very expensive, in my opinion, and it's not absolutely required. But if you want to take the test, go ahead and take it. If you feel like your performance was strong enough, you can go ahead and submit those scores to us. But we are not holding it against people if they do not submit scores. Like many other scores, like many other schools, we are test optional this year. And uh, last year, 50% of the students who ended up enrolling at Groton submitted tests and 50% did not. Don't feel pressure to do so, but I do think that it's a good experience to get a sense of that. If you are uh, studying in a school where English is not the primary language of instruction uh, and hasn't been for the past two years, then you, you should indeed take the TOEFL or the IELTS test or Duolingo, uh, that would be required. Duolingo 
uh, is quite inexpensive. And I, I rec recommend looking at that test because it's often overlooked and it, it is a good opportunity to just uh, to, to demonstrate your ability in English. All right, so where are we right now? And what time of year? You're probably interviewing somewhere between October and December, we hope. Um, and it, at, in November, at the earliest, we think it's time for you to ask teachers to fill out recommendations for you. Give them a bit of time um, so they can get to know you. So a couple months, and then it's time to ask them to complete recommendations. What, what we require is that we have an English teacher, a current English teacher, and a current math teacher uh, complete recommendations. There are also two other recommendations at Glotton and many other schools. There's the personal recommendation, and you can ask either a teacher or some other adult who knows you well to complete a personal recommendation. It's not required though. The special interest recommendation is a, a funny recommendation in that half of it seems to be about the arts and half of it uh, is about uh, athletic ability. Um, so if you are uh, someone who's a good musician or a good artist, you submit it to give it to someone who is familiar with your ability in the arts. If you want your athletic uh, talents to be displayed better, then you should ask people to complete the special interest form. Uh, coaches uh, are really helpful. Now, the other thing I'll, I'll mention that's related to, to this, uh, uh, showing off your extracurricular interests, is completing um, a special interest form in athletics. Um, it's actually just called another inquiry form, the athletic inquiry form. And it's also uh, an inquiry form for uh, the arts. Many schools will have both of those as well. So those are helpful because what, what the reason they're helpful is they're a way to connect you with the school, to give information about um, something that, that you feel that you're particularly strong in so that we can get to know you better. You don't have to feel compelled to do that if you're not a, a big artist or a big athlete. Don't feel like you have to do that because um, there are many other ways that you're gonna display your talents. And probably the biggest one is the next, uh, uh, next item on this list, which is completing your application. When it comes to completing the short answers and essays, um, we're looking for people who are, who are really going to reveal uh, something about their perception of their value, uh, their life experience. We want you to dig in and we want you to do this alone by yourself. Uh, we want you to really give your authentic voice because remember the main thing we're after is getting that sense of that, that this is a good fit. So the clearer you are about who you are um, is, is all the better when it comes to this admission process. And the other thing that I'll mention is the deadline for applications. At Groton, we ask that you submit your application by January 15th and uh, many other schools will have an application around the 31st. You will hear uh, a decision from us on March 10th. That's the uh, uniform date for releasing decisions amongst the, in, uh, at least amongst the boarding schools. So um, that's really the timeline of the work that's ahead. One other important thing is financial aid. Don't, don't hold back if you feel like you might need, your family might need some financial aid. This is really addressed to parents, of course, but um, if you feel you may need financial aid at any point in the journey that your child will have through a school, you should complete that financial aid form right from the beginning. It is much easier than it was years ago. It used to be that you had to pull all your taxes together from the the, the year that just passed, uh, get those done in January and submit them. Um, colleges and most independent schools have moved over to asking for financial aid information from the previous previous year. So for uh, when you 
you're applying to schools in 2021, you are supplying financial information that comes off your 2019 form, uh, your 2019, um, uh, sorry, uh, income tax forms. Financial aid is something that's very generous at a place like Rotten, and we are enormously proud of that. We want a diverse population socioeconomically, ethnically, racially. Um, really, if you feel like you'll qualify for financial aid, go ahead and, and uh, complete a financial aid application. That's due, I, I think our deadline is, is January 31st for that. It may be the 15th, um, but all of this information will be available to you and is available to you on our application play, page. Uh, called How to Apply. That's my run through. Carolyn, what did I miss? Anything? Anything to add? Um, nothing. I would, I would plug the fact that uh, next week we do have a presentation by our colleague, the Director of Financial Aid, about uh, affording Groton in general and this, the financial aid process. So if any parents want uh, further support in that space, um, please do either log on or look out for the recording of, of that. And yeah. Uh, the only other thing maybe that I would add is or ask is if you were to put yourself in the shoes of an applicant, um, younger Ian, what what do you what part of the process do you think you would be most excited about or maybe most nervous about? Um, let's see. Knowing who I was back then, I'd be excited about interviewing. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. <laughs> to meet people and talk, uh, I felt comfortable about presenting myself. Probably too comfortable. Um, <laughs> I. And I think I would be nervous about taking a standardized test because when I was growing up, I think we took these things called the California Achievement Test. Uh, and we took them year after year in the spring. I can still remember doing that in elementary school, but I uh, never felt like they, I never knew what, why they, if they mattered or anything like that. And these things do matter to a certain extent. I should add something about standardized tests, by the way. A lot of people think you have to get a certain score to get accepted to the top schools. You have to do well, but not everybody has to do the same because not everybody has had the same opportunities in kindergarten through eighth grade or, or beyond. So we're really looking at very particular situations as far as that's concerned. But I would have been nervous. Yeah. All right. Well, um, now that we've gotten to know Mr. Gracie a bit more and had an overview of the process, I'm going to introduce myself further and um, introduce an activity. So my names are originally from Colombia. If there are any, um, if anybody's logging in from Colombia, greetings to you. Uh, I myself, though, grew up in Queens, New York. Um, there I am um, shopping for oranges and flushing. Um, and I attended a public school up until eighth grade. Uh, and here I am in third grade. Uh, and through the help of a nonprofit organization called Prep for Prep, I became exposed to the idea of boarding schools. It was not something that I was aware of before, but I was a huge fan of Harry Potter at the time. And so the second that I heard that there was an opportunity to um, study in a space um, in which I could live alongside my friends and have more opportunities than were currently available to me, I jumped right on it. And so through their help, I landed at Phillips Academy, and here's a, um, a map of campus and I just remember really loving this map when I was doing school research uh, and I loved it. Um, I spent four years in the boarding school setting um, and went on to go to college. I was the first person in my family to graduate from college in the United States. Um, there's me and my mom and my dad um, and that's something that I'm really proud of and uh, because I think the boarding school um, path really changed the course of my life, uh, I feel very um, inspired to do the work that we do in the admissions office so that more people bec can become exposed to this opportunity. And um, because it also just gives me an opportunity to meet people from all over the world. That was one of my favorite things about um, going to a school like Andover and is one of my favorite things about working at Groton now. Um, so with all of that in mind, I'm going to have us do a short activity and it's going to help us visualize our future. So uh, here it is. Um, I want everybody, all of the students in particular, um, to imagine that you are a high school senior. Um, so whatever grade you are now, you are envisioning yourself in the future. Maybe you're closing your eyes or maybe you're not. 
Um, and I want you to take some time to either describe, so um, you might need either a piece of paper or maybe you're just gonna type on your own device, um, either describe what your environment is like as a high school senior, or maybe you'll draw it. Um, I like to draw too. So maybe you're gonna draw yourself as a high school senior. And here are some prompts that can really help uh, inspire this imagination or this vision of yourself in the future. Um, as a high school senior, who is around to support you? Um, what is the campus or the classroom that you're in like? What kind of resources are available to you? Uh, how long does it take for you to get to school? So if you are um, commuting um, to, uh, to a day school, like how long do you want that to be? Or if you are um, traveling to a boarding school, like how, how, what kind of distance are you comfortable with? Uh, how does your current school as high school senior, how does your current school compare to your past school experiences? So if you were to compare it to your past middle school, what would it be like? And how are you preparing for your next step in life? Uh, so these are a lot of questions. So I'm going to give us about three or so minutes to really mull over these questions. Um, and then we'll come back together and um, Ian and I might share some of our visualizations of the future. Um, and I'll invite folks to also share some reflections in the chat. But I'll start the timer now. And Ian, maybe this is also a good time for us to tackle some questions in the Q&A box in the chat. Right. All right, so that was three minutes. Hopefully folks have been um, taking the time to really visualize their future. Um, I see some people are already dropping in the chat some of their own um, vision. So if you feel comfortable, go ahead and maybe drop a line or two about what you think um, your high school future might hold for you. Um, so I see people saying that they envision a supportive community, um, close community, diverse, beautiful, different backgrounds.
And I also see some questions, which, which we're getting to for sure. All right, someone saying, imagine friends and teammates enjoying time together, teachers that can trust and chat, uh, teachers who they trust and challenge, but can also laugh, learning alongside people from all over the world, receiving support from friends, school officers, and maybe even the cats <laughs> um, that they could feed. Are there cats on campus, Ian? Yeah, there are cats. Yeah, dogs are too. <laughs> the dogs do have it, the dogs do have it. <laughs> um, perfect. Uh, I think that this uh, reflection activity is really important because uh, as Mr. Gracie mentioned at the beginning, there are so many different schools that could serve uh, your needs, uh, but it is also good to have a sense of what your top, top priorities are. If you know that there's a certain language that you really wanna study in the future, or if you know that there's a certain club that you really wanna be a part of, those are the things that could help guide your school search. Um, so if I'm putting myself in the shoes of Mr. Gracie, maybe I would be making sure that there's a baseball team um, or maybe looking for in the, in the curriculum, um, a, a class list that includes a film class, um, maybe even in a gardening club. Um, I know for me, I was looking for um, opportunities to travel abroad. I had traveled to my home country of Colombia, but I really wanted to see the world outside of New York. So that was really, really important to me. Um, I was looking for a diverse community, um, a place where I knew that I'd be surrounded by people that had a similar experience to me. Um, I was also really drawn to um, the step team at Andover, um, which I later became a part of, and um, later, and now I'm a part of the step team at Groton too. So um, that's a little bit of how I think our story is kind of infused with this activity. Um, and is there anything else you want to add before you move on, Ian? Yeah, I think I would also add um, that beyond just the, the activities, and you know, we overlap a lot with a lot of schools, is to think about the effect of, uh, of the size of a school. I think that uh, a smaller school in many ways offers more opportunities um, to people to, to really perform, uh, to be able to perform either in theater or to be on an athletic team. Larger schools are tremendous. They'll have, uh, they'll have a wider uh, assortment of activities and perhaps sports. So if you have a really specialized interest, that may suit you much better. But think about that intangible quality that it's hard to, uh, hard to uh, really put uh, into any sort of evaluative scheme. Um, just think about what it might be, feel like to be in a place where you actually are known by everybody and they, they're all uh, work really uh, they they are working for you. Uh, it, it's one of the wonderful things about Groton. I went over and plugged Groton too much uh, in in this um, presentation, but I think it's something that I, I worry that sometimes that people don't see that what what uh, can be seen in that sort of uh, just in in the particular environment of a school. Right, and I think that um, to the earlier point about it being a science and an art, like the science piece could be looking at the different um, school population sizes or the different school lists, which I just mentioned, or sorry, the class list that I just mentioned. Um, but it's also like um, art because when you go to a museum and every, two people might look at the same painting and have a different feeling and a different impression of it. And I think the same could be true when you visit different schools. Um, when you found the school that's right for you, sometimes you just know, and maybe the other person um, next to you, maybe they don't feel the same way, but it doesn't mean that it's not a great piece of art or um, a good fit for you. Um, all right, so we are gonna transition briefly. Um, we're gonna share a school research template um, that can help you in your own school search. Um, and everyone should be able to open it. Um, and it's view only. So if you want to make your own copy, you may. Um, but I'm going to show you just how this template works and how we, uh, we've used it before with students. So um, a few things I'll point out is um, you'll notice at the bottom of this uh, school research template that there are different tabs. There's a tab for school one, 
school two and school three. Um, in this world, uh, or in this example, you know, we're just considering three schools and the first one is Groton because yeah, we're Groton. Um, but uh, if you make a copy of this template, feel free um, to have more tabs or obviously switch out the school names at the top. Uh, this school research template um, is meant to um, just like help you organize um, some of the, the data as you research schools. Um, and maybe Ian, you could help me fill these out quickly, some of these fast facts. Um, for Groton, do you happen to know the average class size? Yes. 11. I can't hear you. 11, 11 yeah. Um, and the number of students would be this year, I think it's... It's actually 379. Yeah, I thought so. Um, location would be Groton, Mass, not Groton, Connecticut. Um, percentage of financial aid, I think that percentage is what this year? 40, uh, 44%. Yeah, 44%. Um, in this template, I we also, include, yeah, so we are co-ed, um, but you may be um, in your own school searches considering single gender schools. Um, student to faculty ratio at Groton is four to one. Um, that is a distinctive um, number that I think is a good one to be looking for as you're um, considering different schools. Um, here we have day school question mark, boarding school question mark, we're both, um, but 15% boarding. Um, distance or minutes from home, that would be different or unique to all of you. Um, I think for Ian and I, it's like two minutes. <laughs> That's right. Um, and this next section I called other stuff. Um, and this has to do more with, less to do with numbers and more just about uh, things you might be able to find on the website or just your own general impressions as you do research. Um, so here in this section it says core values slash mission. Um, Ian, would you want to share that one for Groton? Sure. I'd like to uh, address the, the issue, uh, or sorry, the attention we have for service on a grand scale. Uh, we look for kindness in our applicants. That's a very important part of who we are. So service and kindness are two things that I think, and academic, um, academic excellence is another feature that we should mention. Nice. And then if you're, um, if you were an applicant filling out the school template, uh, school research template, interesting classes um, at Groton, and what are some that might catch your attention, Ian, as an applicant? I would take court and constitution with uh, John Lyons, and I would take uh, courses uh, taught by uh, Jen Wallace in history. Um, her World in the West course is great. Um, I also like, um, well, there's a number of things. Martha Gracie teaches a great course on Southern Lit, and uh, Edith Gracie teaches a wonderful course on the Italian Renaissance, both the politics, art, and uh, literature of the Italian Renaissance. Okay, Italian Renaissance. Um, uh, young me was really into, and current me was really into creative writing. Um, or, and, and I've taken this class actually as an adult um, with our colleague, Mr. Capen. So um, short fiction writing um, with Mr. Capen might've been something that caught my attention back in the day. Um, language offerings at Groton, we offer um, Greek, Latin, Spanish, um, Chinese, and French. Uh, so that's an easy one. And again, as you're considering different schools, you, you can fill that all out. Um, club offerings of interest, sports offerings of interest, like we mentioned, um, Mr. Gracie likes baseball. I was really into the step team. Um, there's a line here for arts, top colleges alumni go to. Um, I think our list this year is, um, Ian, do you remember off the top of your head? Yeah, uh, top three would be uh, U Chicago, uh, Harvard, and Georgetown. Right, and I think all schools make that kind of information public, so you can um, fill that out as you're doing research. Um, opportunity to go abroad, yes or no? Yes, um, at Groton. Um, what do kids do for fun? Um, what are some things that come to mind, Ian? Well, I think step team's pretty fun. <laughs> okay, um, step team. Um, Cultural days are really uh, wonderful here, where okay. we explore the different cultures of our students. Uh, surprise holiday is great. That's really fun. That's when we get a day off uh, as a surprise once every term. And uh, I think that the rivalry with St. Mark's is really fun too. Yeah. Uh, 
the headmaster, I think that's an, an important, another important thing to consider as you're doing research on schools. Um, our headmaster, his name is um, Tenda Makubela, uh, and he just has an incredible story. Uh, and I think that as you're considering schools, maybe middle school me wouldn't have thought about this, um, but I do think it's an important consideration. Um, or ask yourself, like, do I care about who my headmaster is? Um, because if, if you do, um, and you want to be a master, being at Groton's a great place. Um, religious affiliation, some schools, most schools, I would say, right, Ian, were founded, um, well, a lot of boarding schools in the Northeast were founded with a tradition uh, of religious affiliation, but most don't have that anymore, right? Um, but yeah, we are an Episcopal school, um, so that would be something that um, I would make note of, and I would ask myself, like, okay, what does that mean for me? Is this something that... Um, I'm excited about, or does my does my identity, my religious identity, fit within the culture of this school? Um, we are Episcopal, but we are also inclusive of so many different faiths and have, I think, six different services, uh, different religious services that happen on campus every weekend. Um, this next section is for food. Um, good food, yes or no? What would you say, Ian? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The, the head <laughs> chef is a Groton parent. He's proud of his food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mental health slash academic supports, yes or no? Um, I think um, I, I would give that a resounding yes too, but obviously as you're filling out this full research template, um, you would determine that for yourself. Um, and then there's a green space for reflections, what do you like or not like? Um, so for yourself, you can you know say like, I love um, the fact that the food is good. I'm not sure about not sure what you would not be sure about. So I'll leave that blank. Um, which aspects need further clarification? So that could just be a space for you to continue to ask yourself, like, what do I need to know more about? Um, do you want to apply to the school? Why or why not? And this yellow section would be potential questions for school rep. Um, this could be a great space to start planning for your interview so that when you are meeting with an interviewer, you kind of have some things that you've already considered um, beforehand uh, for when they ask you if you have any questions. Um, I think on our end, it's nice when the student has thought about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to walk through folks through that template. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, and I think we should dedicate the rest of the time to answering some of their questions. Um, but Ian, do you have anything else you think we should touch on? Yeah, I just, um, I do want to give a plug to uh, Groton Online and, and seeing the webinars that we're gonna be presenting. Ms. Chica mentioned that we do have this financial aid um, webinar coming up. We're gonna have an even bigger thing come up on Saturday when we have a, a virtual open house. The headmaster will kick things off. Uh, we'll hear from alumni and uh, you get to meet a lot of Groton students. See, this is the thing that's happening this year. You're gonna meet more Groton students uh, this way than you would if you came to campus and had a tour with one tour guide. So um, go ahead and join these activities. They can be really valuable to you. And um, that's and the other thing I would say is look, get uh, do try to sign up for an interview soon because we actually ran out of spaces last year. It was really hard, and we want to make sure we can make as much of a connection with you as possible. And I'll, I dropped the um, link to our virtual events um, page in the chat. And I'll also drop the link to our interview scheduling in the chat too. Great, so can we just turn to some questions now? Yeah, let's do it. There's, there's a few um, folks, if you've been dropping them in the chat, um, we may have lost them just because there's been so much activity. So um, feel free to move them over to the Q and A box. Okay, I, I see one in Q&A. What's the average SSAT score of accepted students? It's not really a terribly relevant answer because people differ so, so much. Um, but we do have a high SSAT average. It's around 90, but that doesn't mean we, some of our favorite applicants would be at 65 or 50 or something like that. So don't, yeah. don't let that limit you, okay? Yeah, the range is really big. Do we admit new students um, to fifth form? Uh, we actually do. Uh, it's not, we don't admit as many as uh, some other schools, 
but we'll admit probably four or five a year, um, not that many. How many students are admitted to year 10? Uh, year 10th grade, that would be, we'd probably admit about uh, 18 or so, and we'd end up with about 12 joining us each year. What else do we have? We've got um, a question. What's the chance of getting into a Groton student as a boarding student versus a day student? There's really not any difference in the admit rate for boarders or day students. Is Groton doing in-person tours? Uh, well, in some ways we are. Um, the, the person you're dealing with though is an admissions counselor uh, when you come to campus and we'll talk with you and show you through the schoolhouse while everyone's in class. Um, but we don't have our students giving tours. We have nine different stations around the circle uh, where we have QR codes that lead to videos uh, um, produced by the students. So it's, um, it's a pretty interesting experience. Um, I think it's worth it to come and visit the campus. Yeah, um, you do have to be vaccinated. I don't know if you mentioned that already, uh, but but it is, I think it's really nice just to see students walking around the circle and just to physically step on the campus. I do think that that really helps. Um, but otherwise, I think we have so many different virtual events that, um, rest assured that you can really get to know the school really well um, if you can't make it to campus or don't feel comfortable coming. Uh, we got a good question, question in terms of FA. Uh, you go for that? your good question and then I'll go with mine. Okay. My good question is about submitting a math sample. Uh, Groton may be one of the only schools that requires that everyone uh, submit a sample of their work in math. And we simply want some sort of a value um, assessment to be submitted. So a graded math sample, just as we asked for a graded writing sample, should be submitted to Groton. Um, and you would get that in, in, in your school. When you take a test, just um, send a, a copy of that into us. And I believe, I believe it could be as short as one question, right, Ian? It can be, yeah. And we're going to ask you to comment on uh, what was difficult about that. And we want to hear you basically uh, writing in math. I want to hear you thinking in math uh, as you write about that problem. Financial aid? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this next question says entering fall 2022 would meet income records from 2020 when COVID hit hardest, and it might not be the most accurate representation of income. Is that a consideration from the school? That's a really important question, one that I should have covered when I discussed financial aid. You have the option when you're submitting your financial aid forms to explain how there may be a difference in your income in 2021 um, as opposed to 2020, and you should definitely give a lot of information there uh, explaining circumstances that may not be addressed in the financial aid form. Right. And also be assured that we reassess your financial aid uh, package every year. And uh, we work with you, I think, pretty intimately um, so that uh, we have a, the best picture possible um, when we're assessing your financial records. And um, you should feel free to communicate with us. Here's a good question. What if a student has a bad day on the interview for whatever reason, is that the end of it? Well, I can recall many conversations in February where the interviewer is asked, you know, what's up? You didn't have a good experience there. And they frequently say, look, if, if the rest of the application looks strong, let's chalk it up to a bad day or, or, or something that, something about me. <laughs> so I, I've seen that happen many times um, in a given year that the interviewer will, will um, cede their perspective to the recommenders who have, have known the child longer. So don't feel like if you had your interview, if you didn't feel your interview went poor, if you feel your interview went poorly, don't give up on the process. Certainly. Um, a question related to the grade. Uh, a quick question about the English writing sample. Does it have a limit of pages? No, it doesn't. 
but we yeah. will that it's not too long. Yeah. Yeah, keep it concise. I think that um, you don't have to show us a lot to, to show us um, your skill as a writer. Mm -hmm. Ms. Chica, what's your favorite part of the school? Oh man, I always joke and I say the food. Um, but um, beyond that, I love the, the beauty of the campus. It's serenity, like really means a lot to me. Uh, but truly, it, it is the students and my relationships with them. Um, this is my 10th year working in schools and um, the bond that I have with Groton students across the board, like not just the students that are in my advisory or that I've crossed paths with, like every single student um, that I've shared campus with, I feel really connected to. What about you? Well, um, we have this uh, ritual at the end of each day, which is called check-in and a dormitory will get together at the end of the day and they will basically speak, talk about their day, and then they rise and they say good night mm -hmm. to their prefects and also to the teacher that's on duty. And um, when a student graduates from Groton School, um, they go through the same ritual that they went through every night at Groton, and they say goodbye to they say goodbye to every teacher, every second former, every third former, every fourth former and every fifth former. It lasts about two and a half hours and then they can leave campus. <laughs> so I, I love that ritual because I get to see that person who I saw at 13 leave the campus at 18 and I get to just see and think about that growth that they went through during all that time. It's just a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, ritual. That is also one of my favorite Groton traditions. And I also love chapel talks. Chapel talks are also really great. All right, we've got so many different questions. It's so hard to choose one. Um, there's a question that says, um, how can you tell the difference between a more supportive school or a school which is uh, more guided at your own? Um, so. I imagine that the question is like, as they're doing the research about schools, like how can a family determine if, if a school is more super supportive versus um, I guess more free, free flowing or allowing uh, of independence? I, I think you have to just um, listen to how they describe the structures that are in place. One thing mm -hmm. you'll hear when we describe uh, the Groton experience is you hear this emphasis on how the original headmaster felt like the best model for a school was a family, and that's why Groton never got really large. Um, but listen to the detail that backs that up. Listen to the detail about advisors bringing uh, their, their advisees over to their homes for dinner. Listen to the detail about the whole faculty, uh, the whole faculty talking about every student at the end of every term. We really review how everyone's doing so that we know each other very well. When you look for um, not just the structures in place, but also the details behind that, you'll get a feeling for the school. You'll also get a good, you're just gonna get a good vibe from all of the experiences that you have listening to students talk about their school and teachers talk about their school through these online presentations. I think that'll help a lot. Yeah, I think um, you're, you're spot on in that, that assessment. I think asking about study hall is like a really easy entryway to figuring out the structures and supports. One thing I love about Groton is that we do have a structured uh, and enforced study hall for eighth and ninth graders, but our students and 10th graders, but our students age up into independence in a really healthy way, I think. Um, and so I think that's distinctive actually about our school. Mm -hmm. Uh, here's a question. What do you think? Uh, sorry, I wanted to ask this one. Can you talk a bit about academic support? Do you have experience with students with learning differences like dyslexia? Um, the frank answer is not that much, but we do have students here who uh, have dyslexia. One of our most impactful seniors has some dyslexia, and uh, he is tremendous at this place. But it's a uphill journal or journey for you if you you've got a, a big learning difference at a place like this. Uh, then again, we do have academic support. There are uh, two full-time teachers working in that area. So you, you do get support, but it's harder at a place like this. 
Yeah, um, I, I would say that um, mm -hmm. all our academic, yeah. oh, what'd you say? I didn't, nothing, I, what else should we do? Let's see. A lot of folks want to know like a general idea of um, like each grade entry point. Um, is there nuance in terms of applying for different grades or like um, what, what's the best grade to apply to it was one of the questions that came through. It's kind of a hard question to answer. Well, five is better than four. Uh, <laughs> um, you have to think about where you are in your life and what you're ready for. I think that's the most important thing for applicants. Um, we will have uh, students come in in eighth grade and that gives them the extra year where they can get a feel for this place. But that's only about 25 to 30 students. Most people come in in ninth grade. And um, uh, then, then again, there are people who discover the opportunities of a place like this later. And so they'll come in temporarily and th that can be a great experience too. So. I really don't think I'm being wishy-washy here, even though I sound like it. Um, you have to think a lot about where you are in your life. Um, that's that's really the most important part of that uh, answer. Yeah, and I would say that that's a good question also to ask of your interviewer, uh, because your interviewer will get a chance to talk to you for 20 to 30 minutes, and they will be able to give you, I think, a more tailored answer to who you are and, and where you are in your life. Uh, but I do think that leading with your preference as opposed to what you think um, will give you the best chance of getting in, quote unquote, um, is kind of the best way to, to maneuver that situation or that question, I guess. One question I see is what are the optimal characteristics of the candidates we're looking for? And um, I'd say that we're really, as I've emphasized earlier, uh, we're very interested in this quality of kindness because at, at our school, uh, um, everybody affects everyone else. And kindness is very important to, to make things work here. It's also in line with our mission. Um, perseverance is really important. Um, this, this quality that we think of as, as grit uh, or related uh, to that as resilience, that's really important in any endeavor in life. Um, and intellectual engagement is another thing that I point to right off the top. Um, our faculty stresses the fact that they like uh, open-mindedness too. We want people who are going to really think hard about the world before them and not make judgments too quickly. Definitely. Here's another good one. Um, during interviews, should folks aim to lead the conversation um, to let interviewers get to know you or should you simply answer their questions? Well, the, the role that you're in is really that of answering the question. So I, I think it's best to show that you're a good listener. Um, and I, I, I think that that's the way to go. What a really good interview has uh, is full of answers that go into a, a good deal of depth. They, they're going to be not just what answers, but how and why. Think about your answers. Um, in, the, in those terms. And I think you're going to end up with a, a better interview. So don't just give what answers, but how and why. Right. Think about stories. We love stories. Um, give us a full picture of what your school is like, what your family's like, um, what some of your favorite hub, what they're like, uh, because uh, we do talk to students from all over the world and uh, we really do enjoy getting to know you. So even if you feel a little bit nervous, uh, know that we're, we're having a lot of fun hearing, hearing your, your stories. So we're trying to stay focused on uh, the, uh, in these last couple of minutes on the application process. Uh, uh, but I will, that's one question of, of being a small school. Do we ever, uh, um, do we ever cut classes because there are not enough people enroll? Uh, well, or do you have independent studies? We've had independent studies called tutorials since the 1930s. It's been something we're really proud of. So if you have a topic you're really interested in as a, an older student at Groton, you can pursue uh, that interest. Hmm. There's so many good ones. <laughs> um, what about for folks who are having a hard time like 
their school maybe like doesn't print a, a particular report card in the same format that we're looking for, or if it's in a different language, or um, maybe like their school wasn't doing traditional tests this year, like what would you say is kind of like your blanket advice for folks in that, in that situation? Okay, um, if you're applying from abroad and you have a transcript which is in a different language, you should have it translated professionally, unfortunately. That's, that's just something that we have to get, uh, we have to receive. Um, let's see. We're accustomed to all sorts of different um, grading scales or some, some schools don't even have grading, but we do our best to, to get answers from schools when we have questions about what particular, uh, what particular grades really mean. So we do our we do our work on trying to make sure that we understand the transcript. A lot of us have been around for a long time in this business, and we're accustomed to uh, seeing a lot of different things. We have a very experienced staff. Uh, where can we find the English writing sample prompts? There aren't prompts. We just ask you to submit um, a paper that you have written for school. So um, so that's essentially it. And if you if you have, uh, if you haven't been asked to write a paper for school, you can first with your interviewer about what uh, what you might do about that. I, I've asked people to write uh, an essay on a topic that was of interest to them. Like that. Right, or if you don't have an English class, uh, feel free to submit a writing piece, maybe from history class or a class in which you are doing some sort of analytical writing. Ideally, it is an essay where you have kind of a point that you're trying to make. Um, we will accept a creative writing piece, but I think we prefer a, a more critical thinking piece. Um, here's a good question that we can, that's like a good overview or a reminder. What are the different recommendation letters we need and from whom? Okay, so we're looking for the uh, current English teacher uh, to submit in a recommendation, the current math teacher. And then we also have a form called the personal recommendation which can be from any adult who knows you well. Um, it can be from another teacher. And the other form that we have for a recommendation is the school recommend, uh, sorry, the special interest recommendation. And that's usually from a coach or a music instructor or perhaps a theater instructor. And the other recommendation comes through in the form of the school report, which is typically uh, written by a guidance counselor, secondary school counselor, or a principal. How important are teacher recommendations in the grant and recommend uh, application? They're very important. Be nice to those people. You have two months. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's super, super important. We, we read those closely. If you have any questions about that, if you have some sort of um, schedule in which we didn't have a math class in the fall, you should discuss that with an interviewer or write Ian Gracie at igracie at groton.org and I'll be giving you answers about what you can do when I understand your situation um, clearly. Okay, I've got quite a few questions about the diversity of Groton. Um, I believe we are 48% people of color at this point. Is that right, Ms. Chica? I believe so. Um, that's in terms of the student body. Um, in terms of faculty, we're at 20%. Uh, in terms of um, Black and Latinx faculty, I think that percentage is, I think it's 11 or 12. Um, and I think on the student side, I believe it's around 18%. Um, so that kind of gives you, I think, a fuller picture in terms of racial diversity. Um, but our students geographically, I think they come from 28 different states and 22 different countries. Um, we're uh, very proud to have a socioeconomically diverse student body, a big focus of our uh, GRAIN initiative, which stands for Grant and Affordability and Inclusion Initiative, um, was uh, a focus on targeting the middle class. Um, so we're really looking to have students from different walks of life on our campus. And I think that really helps dispel stereotypes about um, where people come from um, and we have such a broad variety, I would say, of religious identities on campus and even just personalities, interests. Um, Grand students, I think, are really well-rounded um, and it makes for a really vibrant school community. 
Um, but we are also having a dedicated webinar to inclusion at Groton, so I'll plug that too. Great. Well, I think we've covered a lot of material um, and um, I wanna thank Ms. Chica for um, really giving us the structure for this presentation tonight. Um, I wish you all well. This is like taking an extra course when you're applying to these schools, but it's really worth it because I think you'll find that you can learn a lot about yourself and what you really want out of life um, by going through this process of, of applying and interviewing at schools. So thanks everybody. It was uh, great to have you all listening tonight. Yeah, thank you so much. We will make things like the recording and the school template available to you um, via email soon enough. Uh, but thank you, thank you so much. Bye everyone. Good night.